tallest woman you've ever seen. Almost as tall as you. Brianna of Tarth. You know her? You're with Brienne of fucking Tarth. Well, not with her yet. But I see the way she looks at me. How does she look at you? And she wants to carve you up and into your liver. You do know her. With men. Welcome. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? And this week is an unusual week because the Game of Thrones episode actually leaked this week. I don't know how I feel about that one. Well, even with the episode leaking, we all can agree that this week's episode was amazing. You want to suck my dick, is that it? Dick? Cock? Ah, uh, dick. I like you. I was taking a look at Twitter. One of the things I came across, Game of Thrones memes, at Thrones underscore memes, Littlefinger is always creeping. What is his plan exactly here? Because... He sucked Brienne into the plot, and now Brienne's off to King's Landing, so that seemed pretty useless. And Arya and Sansa are fighting, and Arya is threatening to kill Sansa, and Sansa doesn't know what to do, so you almost get the impression that maybe Sansa's gonna have to make her own moves and kill Arya. But they're sisters, so would they really? Like, what's going on there, and why, why did we take time away from the main story to show these two? Note how we see, you see that as the main story, but I think it's a really big deal because some of the issue going on at Winterfell does have to do with where the power lies and who people trust. I think Littlefinger's plan is working perfectly if Arya is insinuating to Sansa that, hey, I could kill you and look what a badass I am. Even though she's not being as careful as she's been in the past. She's not acting in the way that got us to really root for her. You know, she's like, I take people's faces. We were saying while we were watching how much we were like, oh my god, I'm rooting for Sansa. Yeah, well I think Littlefinger's whole thing is he wants control and power. Up until this point, Sansa has been distant. This solidifies Sansa's need for um, whatever Littlefinger's input would be on the situation. And he's separating those two and he knows how badass Arya can be. So to have Sansa on his side, I think it gives him a little bit more of um, a leg in the situation. Screw Sansa. She needs to die. Oh my she, gosh. She's all bitching about, oh, we've all had hard times since our family dies. Don't say it. I know what you're about to say. Yeah, me too. Castle, castle, castle. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. And everyone else has been out in the actual damn world. And here you have Sansa bitching that she's been in castles. I mean, granted, fine, she was raped, and that's bad, it's bad to rape people, but she's dressed up in nice silk clothes, food everywhere, never really worrying about trying to get hungry, and you're, here you have Arya, a badass, a badass ninja. I want her to actually kill her sister. But you know what? I, in a way, as much as I tend to roll my eyes at Carlo, this is kind of Arya's point of view. You know, the whole speech about how would it feel to be in pretty silks like you, all I need is your face. And I really don't blame Sansa for sort of regressing when her sister's being really aggressive. She knows her even less than she did before. John's off, she can't reach him. I just had an uh, aha moment. Wouldn't it be amazing if Arya killed Littlefinger, took his face, and then started controlling Sansa. Why didn't she do that already? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he still alive? <laughs> but going even more far north than that, I wasn't really sure what the whole plan was with John and his buddies. So I was looking at what people were thinking on Twitter. And Check Hook Fighting said, The Magnificent Seven explorer passed the wall tonight. What are the Vegas odds on this one? Seven? Seven, I mean, did you, how many did you count? I counted about 13. seven coming out of the wall. And then every time they needed somebody to die, there was another magical member of their group, another red shirt, if you will, to throw to the walkers. It was a baker's dozen. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many of them. Like, once the, the polar bear came out and started, like, attacking, I was like, where did all these people come from? I felt like the whole episode I kept looking at Jazz and being like, was that Tormund? Yeah. Was that Derek? And then she'd be like, no, he's still alive. I'm like, well, then who the hell was that? <laughs> who are these random people with Wait, that? Wait, was that the hound? No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. We're okay. We're safe. I actually had the notion while it was happening, I mean, Danny needed to be humbled 
in my opinion. So I wasn't sure exactly how that was going to happen. I really felt like I knew John wasn't going to die. But it occurred to me personally, Danny could have died at that point. Because she can't have children unless, of course, magically John and Danny equals Danny can have children. I am complete opposite. We had some, some viewing issues and it froze right when the, the Night King picked up the spear and I looked at Jazz and I was like, you know, they could kill John at this point because Danny has seen it all. She could pick up the cause. John is, at this point, only good for telling everybody we need to fight the White Walkers, we need to fight the White Walkers. If he dies, this will spur Danny into doing it. You knew somebody was going to die in this episode. I thought, well, good chance it's going to be John. But the thing is, he already died once, and they kept him dead for a while before bringing him back. The writers are probably not going to do the same thing twice. So, and on top of that, based on the previous episode, I mean, we all know apparently he is the true king of this whole damn world. It's just... Arguably, we know that he has the right to the throne even more than Danny, but they don't know that. To me, you can't kill John until people know he's the heir. I definitely didn't see the death of the dragon coming because wh why would you throw it at the dragon? You have the closer dragon right here. Mm -hmm. You have all of your enemies right here. But then there's a the thought of, unless he just really wanted a dragon white, and it was, well, they might try to defend this dragon if I throw it here. Get the one in the air, bring that one down. I thought Jorah was gonna die, because like there was that one scene where he started to grab the spear, and then you see Jorah in the shot, and then Danny right there, so I thought like Jorah was gonna like jump in, and then he fucking has the arm of an athlete, and he repels that thing so far. I was like, all right, maybe not. <laughs> what was John thinking when he would not just get on Drogon? and flee with everybody else. Was he trying to get to the Night King and take him down, or was he just trying to show off for Danny? I really think that A, it didn't occur to him that we could turn, you know, kill a dragon, and B, Dondarrion's the one who's been convincing him the whole episode, you and I are here because we're finishers. We didn't come out here to die, we came out here to kill somebody like that. That's gonna end this thing. <laughs> Will Danny hold it against John? No. Not so far. I mean, at the very end, they were holding hands like, you know what, you're my queen. I kneel, but you know, kind of in bed right now. But, but she's also she's also a little bit of a bottler. I could see her getting mad at one point and throwing it in his face. Like, if you just gotten on the damn dragon, we could have gotten away and, and Sarian would still be alive. Yeah. And he's going to be like, well, when I was in bed, why didn't you just join me? <laughs> and then now we have a dragon white. What are the powers of the dragon white? <sighs> when I was looking at Twitter for what they thought about white dragons. At D-R-N-O-O-R-R -R said, so this one dragon became a white one too. Is it gonna throw ice instead of fire or what? So, I mean, in this case, I think it is going to actually be an ice dragon. So will it be like blue, looks like fire, but it freezes people? I think so. Cause I thought that even if it was blue, but it was still like fire, it could melt the wall. Because if it's blue fire and it just freezes things, it can't really break through the wall. No, but it could go around the wall more. You could freeze even more space around the little wall. Hell, you could build a bridge over the wall. It's a damn zombie dragon. It'll just fly through the damn wall. And how close was are the, the White Walkers to the wall? Because Gendry did not run that far <laughs> to get back to the gate. Actually, was the a, lot of, one. a lot of things were very, very fast and convenient. Like how fast was the bird that flew from East Watch to Dragonstone. To me, the map, to me watching it, it seemed like maybe a day, a day and a half later, somebody did the math and the whole thing's about almost four days. The entire process from Gendry running up, the Raven flying and her flying back, it's a little less than four days. So they sat there on that little ice island for four days. And they didn't have fire. And no food. Oh, well, they had fire with the sword. They had some supplies. They labored out there a while. And the White Walkers were just like, oh, this ice. Can't cross that. Well, for four waited, days. They waited for it to freeze back over. Because the first day, it's just slush. You're just going to fall back through. They had to wait for it to be able to charge it again. Stupid hound. Just had to throw the rock. <laughs> Hounded his temper. I got some people on Twitter talking. And they said, um, this is Bran. Bran knows everything, yet he does not spoil. 
Bran is a good lord. Be like Bran. Which he didn't. He didn't even show his face in this episode. Supposedly, but somebody sent Uncle Benjamin to go get John. Exactly. And the last time when they asked who sent him, he said it was the Three-Eyed Raven. Because it's very convenient that he just swooped up out of nowhere, apparently after four days, <laughs> to Be save John from the ice. That's That seems to be his entire purpose in being is be kind of near the wall for when your family needs you because they're really important. So is he dead now? Yes, he was already dead. dead. I think Did, he's dead dead. Will he survive and still be the kind of half dead that he was? Is he dead dead or is he an actual white now? Is he he's like a white dead. water? I say I thought he was like ripped to shreds. I think so too. I think he's like gone. So that plot convenience is out. No more saves by Uncle Benjamin. Right? Unless he's only nearly hit. Unless he's going to start walking around as one of the bone creatures. <laughs> Which I don't think they're going to bring that back. But they could, because they don't have to hire that actor anymore. <laughs> and is Bran behind it, meaning that Bran is watching everything and saying nothing. But in a way, I guess you can think that this is why he's not helping his idiot sisters, because he's sitting there watching the important story, like the rest of us. <laughs> hoping that they'll get it figured out. You look nice during your wedding. <laughs> I think Bran has overload. Like, Bran has information overload. He's seeing everything. It's all kind of jumbled up. If he can discern something important, then he's trying to step in as the Three-Eyed Raven. No, he's just he's just watching everything happen and to be like, yeah, I knew that coming. You were gonna die, but I didn't say anything. Just I just didn't want to. Cause I don't have feelings anymore, evil Bran. I'm gonna say what needs to be said, and what everybody has been waiting for. When the fuck is it gonna be that damn tree? You mean the tree when, with the Thry Raven was like, like beyond the wall? The tree with the face, <laughs> the face! Just to clarify, in your mind, all of the Game of Thrones fans are waiting for Bran to become a tree. <laughs> yes! That's what I wanna know. He already has the personality of the damn tree, might as well just become the tree. I think the tree has more personality than he does. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that one alone. Yeah. So, at Daenerys said, Welcome back to the friend zone, Jorah. We already got into this a little bit, but uh, it seems like Danny's made her choice, doesn't it? Well, I mean, he could still think in his head that she came up here to save me. But she sat there on Drogon waiting for Jon Snow to come back. And yeah. Jorah was already on the dragon. So... <laughs> you coming? <laughs> He's like, what are we waiting for? Let's go. And she's like, no, John's still over there. <laughs> what was the comment that she made to Tyrion that he was too little as a young? <laughs> yeah, and the wrong person to say that <laughs> <Yeah>. to. <laughs> well, think about who her husband was. A giant call. Oh, so, okay. you know, and even the other guys that she's gone out with. Dar really big Dario guys. was a lot taller, and even uh, okay. Jorah yeah. is a taller guy. And then there's little John Snow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a regular sized dude? I don't know about that. But she, she got so turned on when she saw the scars on his chest. I mean, you saw it on her face. She was like, it's real. That's hot. I'm going to go in this room. Everyone leave so it can just be her and him and I. I just didn't know that Danny was a height snob like that. Oh, you're under six foot? Clearly she's not. She was just BSing because Tyrion called her out for like, oh yeah, John doesn't like you. He's not. He hasn't been making eyes at you since he came to Dragonstone. I think he likes you, likes you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she. I was honestly surprised that she was so forgiving of John for everything, because that was her child that died, and yeah. whether or not it would have died, regardless if he jumped back on the dragon, she went up there to save him. But John knows. He woke up immediately and said, "I'm sorry." Like every man should. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, and uh, I did see a lot. He of... was up there just trying to please her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so they're holding hands now. He's bent the knee, metaphorically, because he can't get up out of bed yet. So how does this play forward? Is he still going to be king of the north when he tells everybody? Or will Sansa flip her shit and say, you're out, I'm taking over. And then Arya will be like, well, you can't be in charge either because I have this letter that'll turn everybody against you. Well, where are they going? They're on a boat and they're going back to Dragonstone? They're going back to Dragonstone, but I'm assuming that she's going to gather... Well, first they have to go to King's Landing and meet up mm. with everybody. And then head north. But I'm guessing they're not heading north till the end of the seventh episode. Predictions from me is that 
John won't necessarily have a chance to explain the bend the knee thing because he and Danny are going to be together, and so he will have to explain because they're going to be united front. Uh, I read somewhere that it is interesting that the surviving dragon that Danny does not ride is Rhaegar. Or Rhaegon. Rhaegon. Whatever the dragon's name Rhaegon. is, it's Rhaegon. It's Rhaegon. clearly named after her brother, who is John's father. Well, based on that, um, thanks for tuning in. Unless you guys have anything else to say, this was fun. Uh, <laughs> please like, comment, and subscribe down below. Um, there's only one more episode left this season, and this last episode better be amazing. But again, my name is Carlo. I'm Allie. Jasmine. I'm Nick. And thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week for the finale.